Hello, hello. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. <laughs> good, uh, good afternoon. <laughs> hello, good. teacher. How are you? Hello, I'm fine. Hi, Anna. How are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, well, welcome to Verbally. Welcome, everyone. In today's class, uh, fairly simple beginner's class, we're going to practice pronunciation of the CH and SH sounds in English. Okay, uh, okay and uh, this can be sometimes confusing, of course, because when we see the spelling, well, uh, SH for the most part is always going to be sh, the sound you make when you tell your children to be quiet, sh. Uh, so that's that's fairly straightforward in reality. Um, although sometimes some new language speakers confuse it with the S sound. However, as far as spelling, when you see SH together, it's usually that sh sound. On the other hand, the CH sound, a wee bit more problematic because, of course, usually, usually CH uh, makes the ch sound that you hear in chocolate, uh, sure, but there are occasions when it makes other sounds. Sometimes CH will make an SH sound. Anna, do you know any words where CH spelling makes an SH sound? Can you think of any? Challenge. It is uh, the most uh, difficult, I think, uh, <laughs> because in, in Spain, uh, we uh, pronounce uh, che uh, too much, um, um, uh, pronounce it, too much uh, pronounce it, che, che. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's difficult, uh, the difference uh, between the two, the two words when you speak um, uh, quickly. <laughs> right. Right, because it, there's two separate sounds in English, right? Is that what you mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and what I was saying is, is some English words, as a matter of fact, the CH spelling actually makes a sh, an SH sound. For example, in the big major metropolis in Illinois, in the United States, Chicago. Um, CH makes uh, an SH sound. The word chic. Uh, Chica, uh, Chicago. Sh Chicago. That's right. Chicago. It's a. Just Chicago. Like, just, it sounds just like the SH in ship. Chicago. Sh Chicago. That's it. And chic, um, meaning stylish, uh, stylish, new, trendy, something is chic. Also, SH sound. Occasionally you will see CH spelling um, and uh, and it makes a K sound. Uh, for example, when we talk about how fast a plane is going, he was going Mach 7. Mach. Sounds just like a K. Yes, so, Mach. Yeah. So, <coughs> pardon me. So occasionally we can be confused by the spelling uh, when it comes to CH. Uh, okay, where is everybody today? Don't be shy. Come in the class. We're going to do some very simple, straightforward exercises and practice CH and SH. Where is everyone? Class is fully booked. Why, are you guys all having dinner, lunch, breakfast? <laughs> okay. Anyway, no reason you and I can't start, Anna. Uh, okay. I'm going to start by doing a screen share here for us, and uh, we're going to start with some pronunciation pairs. We're just going to go down the list and try these out. Okay. Uh, once, uh, let me quickly welcome uh, Julieta. Hi, teacher. Hi. Uh, where are you from, Julieta? I'm from Italy. Italy. 
Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, Thank you. Okay, nice to have you here. Going to do a little pronunciation work together. Going to have all you guys participating as well. Uh, also, hello to Hajar. Hello, teacher. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? How are you doing today? Yeah, good. Thank you. Okay, terrific. Ajar, uh, where are you from? I think maybe you told me before, but I forgot. Uh, this is the first time for 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 you, and I am living I am living in uh, Morocco. Ah, Morocco, beautiful. Yeah. Okay, terrific. Well, thanks for joining us, Ajar. Um, glad you could be with us today and I, I'm sorry I somebody with us very similar or even the same name I must be thinking of yeah okay well uh, you can call me Oakley nice to meet you yeah nice to meet you okay and hello to Shadow Shadow yeah hello teacher hello everybody hello hi uh, haven't seen you in a while how have you been yeah, I'm doing great. Thank you. Okay. Terrific. Uh, okay. Uh, let's get started once again. We're looking today at the sound shh, as in be quiet. When you put your finger over your lips, you say shh. It is a voiceless sound. This is important, when, especially when we're talking about pronunciation, because knowing the phonetic sounds, if they're voiceless or voiced, uh, actually can be very important because it affects pronunciation of past tense ED endings in verbs. Uh, that's why we have different pronunciations. Um, that's why we say like washed. I washed my socks. Okay. It's a voiceless sound after the SH sound. The ED is pronounced as a, as a T, but on the other hand, so are uh, the CH sound, which is also voiceless, um, like the sound in watch or in a sneeze, a chew, if you sneeze that way, that is, all right. Um, same thing with CH at the ends of verbs when we make them past tense in regular verbs, watch becomes watched, all right. So both of these, when verbs end with these sounds, they're both voiceless, which means our pronunciation for past tense verbs sounds like a T at the end. Washed, watched. One other important note that has to do with them being voiceless, just as it affects past tense verbs, it also affects past tense, uh, no, sorry, not past tense, I'm sorry, plurals. Um, with the voiceless sound or with the sibilant sound actually because these are what are called sibilants uh, they both get the same type of pronunciation for endings of past tense for example doesn't matter noun or a verb in, in conjugation conjugating a verb he washes his socks okay he watches TV. Both of them share the is ending when we add ES. Washes, watches. All right, so they are quite similar, obviously. Um, the sh sound is a continuant. Obviously, I can do this for a very long time. Sh All right. Um, on the other hand, CH is not a continuous sound. It is a stop sound. So ch and there's no way to say ch for a long time. So this, on this point, they are very different. So this is one thing, especially for you Spanish viewers, one way that they are quite different. And remember this, the SH, you can continue ad infinitum, forever, until you run out of breath, of course, um, but ch you cannot. It's not possible. 
All right, let's uh, start out so I can hear you guys trying this out. I, I'm, we're going to start out with, I'm going to have you go down this list of pairs, minimal pairs. Let me quickly welcome Italo. Oh, I'm sorry, what's your name? Italo. My name is Italo. Italo. Yes. That's correct. All right, Italo. Um, oh, that's a unique name. That's cool. Uh, my second name is uh, Alberto, Italo Alberto. Italo Alberto. Okay. Well, what would you prefer to have me call you? Uh, Italo. Thanks. Italo. Okay. And yes. where, where are you from? I'm from Colombia, Bogota. Bogota. Okay. Yes. Excellent. We got a nice mixed crew today. All right. Terrific. Nice to have you aboard, and uh, nice to meet you. All right, let's get started. I'm going to start with Anna, who is the first in the class. What All I would like you to do, you guys, this is very simple. I want you to slowly, <laughs> so I can listen to you very carefully, uh, just repeat the, the pair one at a time. So like this, shoe, chew. Okay. Um, chew, um, um, chew. Okay. Shoe. Shoe. Okay, we went backwards, but I I could tell you were going backwards. So that's a good thing. <laughs> that was, that was, that's good. I could tell that you did shoe first. So that's a good thing. Your pronunciation was clear. Phonetics of the sound. And that, that was actually good. Let's go this one for all highlighted, okay? Maybe I'll switch it around uh, just to keep you guessing. That seems a little more inter entertaining. Julieta, your turn. Next pair. Share, chair. Okay. Very good. That was perfect. Nothing to say there. Hajar, uh, okay. Next pair. Wish, which. Wish, which. Wish, Very good. Which. Very good. Perfect. Okay. Sh uh, shadow, next pair. Chip, chip. Okay, perfect. No problem at all. Uh, all right, the pair I've been using as an example, actually, Italo. Uh, wash and watch. All right, that was perfect. All right, maybe it uh, looks like uh, not quite one more round. Uh, Anna? Yes, uh, cheap, chip. Okay. Let's try that again. The first one here. Um, cheap. Sheep. Yes. Cheap. Cheap. Okay, that's right. Okay, you try to drag this sound, drag it out, stretch the sound, continue the sound a little bit, and act, that actually helps with the pronunciation. All right. Sheep. Cheap. 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 That's better. Okay, that's pretty okay. good. Thank you. Nice. Uh, Julieta, next pair. Cash, catch. All right, that's sounding good. That's very good. Hajar, next pair. Sheet, cheat. Very good. I especially like the long, uh, this is actually a long I sound. E, that's good. <laughs> you definitely don't want to do this pair with a short I sound, right? Okay, which is another common mistake that is often combined with the SH and the CH. Um, as in uh, ship and sheep. Uh, okay, it's important to get this, the long E and the, sh the well, it's the long I sound actually in E. Uh, the long sound and the short sound. Okay, uh, last one here, Shadow. Mash, match. Mash, match. Okay, even at the ends of the words, you can stretch that sound a little bit, make it clearer. Mash and match. It's a very quick sound. Uh, it's, well, anywhere in the word, but especially you can hear it at the ends of words. All right. Going to get slightly more complicated here. I'm going to... You know, just a wee bit more complicated as we go along here. All right. 
I'm going to try short some short phrases. First of all, with the sh sound. So, Italo, I'm going to start with you. Yes. Number one. Washing machine. Perfect. Okay, this word machine is a word that Spanish speakers often mistakenly pronounce as machine, but of course in English it is an SH sound, machine. That was perfect, Natal, by the way. Good Thanks. job. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, Anna, try number two. Yes, uh, Polish, uh, your shoes. Ooh. That's another one. Shoes mm. is another one that trips up a lot of Spanish speakers. One more time. Uh, Polish, your shoes. Shoes. Yeah. yeah, that's better. Shoes. Um, shoes. One, one there you go. That's much better. One little trick is start pronouncing it or voicing it. It's a voice sound. Before you even get your tongue completely in place. Shoes. Shoes. So there's a little slight S introduction, all right? And it stretches the sound as well, so you're really doing two things. If you start saying like an S sound, shoes, all right? So you shoes. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, shoes. Okay, that's better. That is better, actually. Okay. Because you are allowed to stretch the sound, so you, you can, if you start with an, it's easy to go from an S to an SH, in other words. It's just a slight adjustment in your tongue. Shoes. Okay. Mm. Uh, S sound into the sh shoes. Shoes. And you, what, if I do that, you can't really even tell I was doing an S sound first. And by the way, there's never an occasion, it's impossible in English to have an S sound before SH. Doesn't simply doesn't exist. So no one will mistake your pronunciation because that's a sound that doesn't exist. So it has to be SH. Shoes. Shoes. <laughs> yeah. You're doing it slowly, but Shoes. if you do it a little faster, okay, that's good. No, that's very good. It's, that's quite excellent, actually. And then as you speed it up, it becomes, you don't even hear the S at all. You just hear the SH, and it sort of forces you to continue pronouncing SH. Actually, that was quite good. It's ex you, you perfectly gave an example of what I was trying to say. Thank you. Uh, Julieta, how about number three? She's washing the dishes. Excellent. Well, I got nothing to say about that. That was perfect. And good endings, too. Dishes. Perfect. Uh, okay. Hajar, can you try number four? The mushrooms are, are shrimp, shrimp are delicious. Uh, del uh, del delicious. delicious. Yeah. yeah. Some, Some people... people think this should be think pronounced as an S, delicious, but it's not. I, I know another delicioso. Uh, I know that it's in other languages, it is pronounced as an S sound, a very similar word, right? But in English, delicious is definitely an SH sound, or supposed to be. Uh, okay, Shadow, can you try number five? Yes, Shirley stopped for shoes. Very good. Perfect. Excellent. Nice pronunciation of the ending ED here as well. Notice that uh, I mentioned earlier um, voiceless sounds when we, when we use a past tense ED ending for regular verbs sounds like a T. Um, Shadow did that perfectly. Shopped. Because P... Is a voiceless sound. Our, our voice does not vibrate. Our voice box, if you hold your Adam's apple, your voice box in your throat, when you say P or SH or CH, there's nothing happens because you're not using your voice. You're just using air. Italo, uh, last number six here, please. Number six. The shirt should be washed. 
Okay. Very good. A little bit of a difficult combination too. Shirts should be washed moving from the T to the SH. That was very good. Good job. All right. We're going to move on to move on to the CH sounds. Uh, Anna, we're back to you. Yes. Uh, she is a sandwich. Very good. Sandwich. Uh, okay. Sandwich is another word that seems to get mispronounced a lot for some reason. Uh, okay. Julieta. Mmm, yummy. Chocolate chip cookies. Do you like chocolate chip cookies, Juliana? Yes, I like it. Okay. <laughs> Me too. A lot of food words, CH. Uh, Hajar. Yeah. Uh, cheddar cheese is not cheap. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, okay, very good. Okay, very cheddar good. cheese. Cheddar. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. 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 Shout out. Can you try number number four, please? Yes. Does the butcher charge much for the chicken? <laughs> okay. That was that was perfect. We're getting to the area where they're starting to become more like tongue twisters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but that was perfect. That was very good. Italo, can you try number five? Number five, uh, which chair did you choose? Yes, now your pronunciation here was perfect, but the structure of this sentence allows me to make a point here. Your pronunciation was not incorrect, okay, because you're trying to do it carefully and pronounce each phonetic sound, all right? Um, but speaking much more naturally in English, I might say, which chair did you choose? Which chair? Which chair? I might have a slight ch chair. Ch ch which chair? Which chair? Which chair? What I do, what am I doing? I'm putting my tongue up for the first CH, and then I'm releasing the sound to indicate the second CH. It's hard to, to do with the CH sound. This is probably the most difficult one. But uh, in many other words, um, okay, for example, uh, over in the Verbling chat box, if I'm going to say rare and then add rabbit, it just sounds like rare rabbit. You do not hear rare rabbit. You don't hear, there's no stopping between the sounds. So you use the last sound when the last phonetic sound, that is a, a consonant sound, is the same as the next consonant sound in a row in a sentence. We just uh, we just repeat it. Um, okay. For example, here's another example. Uh, rat tail. Rat tail. You don't hear rat tail. <laughs> it doesn't stop and start again in English. This is called joining. Uh, we join words to uh, help out our rhythm and to keep a rhythm. Uh, there's a lot more to that, but that's one of the basic one of the basic aspects of natural rhythmic speaking in English. Uh, oh. Okay, uh, Anna, back to you. Number six. Yes, uh, please watch the children in the lunch room. Okay, please watch the children in the lunch room. All right, and uh, this particular sentence also allows me to make one more point about pronunciation in English. Do you know, Anna, what kind of word this is by any chance? When uh, we have two words. If I if I understand the the word, the meaning of the word. Why? Well, well, no. I I'm sorry. I'm I'm asking what kind of word it is. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't want to confuse you. If this is called a compound word, this type of word, meaning it's made up of two different words, lunch 
and room. Okay. Uh, one another basic pillar of English pronunciation is whenever we have one of these compound nouns, we pronounce it the first word with a high or primary stress, a higher pitch, a higher tone. La, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, up here. And room, the second word, with a low pitch or what we call secondary stress. So lunch room. Lunch room. Lunch we do this. room. That, that's it. And we do this with every single, there's no exceptions. We do this with every... Um, compound noun, whether it's a some com some some are like lunchroom, they're one word, like baseball, notebook, lunchroom, and some are two words, cell phone, air conditioner. Yes, yes, I I got it. Yes. Okay. All right. It's uh, another basic premise in pronouncing English. Just the opportunity was there, so I need I wanted to. Point that out. Uh, okay, now we're going to combine them. We're, we're just progressively going to look at harder and harder, more difficult sentences. Julieta, can you start with number one? Let's choose new shoes. Okay, very good. Julieta, do you like to shoe shop? Yes. Yes. Okay. Good for you. Okay, Hajar. Hajar gets all the cheese. All the cheese She's eating the cheese. <laughs> okay. okay, excellent. Thanks. Hajar, Hajar, you like it? Like like yes, I like it. Okay, you're getting all the getting cheese. All the cheese. Sandwiches. Sandwiches. Okay. 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 Uh, Shadow, number three. Sherry likes cherry pie. That's perfect. All right. Very clear difference in the SH and the CH sound. Uh, okay. Italo, number four. Uh, he paid cash for the catch of the day. Okay. Also, very good job. Good. Uh, very easy to tell the difference between the CH and the SH. Um, however, uh, Italo, what on earth is the catch of the day? Excuse me, uh, repeat the question. What does that mean? I said, I said, what on earth is, I used an idiom, what on earth is that? More simply, what is the catch of the day? What does that mean? Um, catch of the day? I don't know. Uh, Tyler, do you like fish? Well, no, I don't know. You don't, you don't like fish? Okay. Uh, yes, but ah, uh, uh, okay. The catch of the day is usually you see this in restaurants for the fish special of the day, whatever was cheap. Uh, it could mean literally what a fisherman eats that night for dinner. The catch of the day refers to fresh fish that was caught today. Uh, okay. Yeah, and it's very uh, common to see this in, on a menu in a restaurant in the United States or Great Britain, okay, referring to the, the freshest fish or the fish special. Nassim, hello, hello. Hello, teacher. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Fine. Nice to have you in the class. Thank you. Uh, could you do me a favor and read this sentence? We're practicing our SH and CH sounds. Okay, we'll try. Uh, the booby shouldn't uh, chew the shoes. Chew. The chew. puppy. The puppy shouldn't chew the shoes. Shoo chew the shoes. Right. Okay, there's that shoes again. Shoes is a tough one for some reason. Um, earlier, before NASM, I was advising one of your classmates. Some of, the, some of these are hard. I understand that. Um, like shoes, 
it's a little easier if you start to pronounce an S sound first, especially when the SH sound is in the beginning of the word. So shoes. It's a little easier to follow through and continue the sound with an SH. So that might help clear your pronunciation slightly. It, it's, your pronunciation is slightly off with shoes. Okay. Uh, okay, and Anna, back to you. Yes, uh, the chef uh, prepared a special, special dish. Okay, and here's one of those trick words. Sorry, Anna, sorry I had to do it to you. Uh, chef is one of those words where the CH actually makes an SH sound in English, like okay. Chicago and Sheiks, chef. Okay. Chef. That's it. The chef. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. The chef prepared a special dish. The okay. chef. The chef uh, prepared a special dish. That's it. Okay, so there are those tricky words where the spelling may throw you off. Uh, very beginning of class. Usually, most of the time, I don't know. I, I really don't know. 90, 95% of the time, CH makes the ch sound. But occasionally, we have these... Uh, special words where it sounds like sh or it can even sound like like a k sound uh, okay uh, Julieta mm. too much milk makes mushy meshed potatoes uh, okay pretty good one small problem mashed mashed mm-hmm now here, of course, all right, I mentioned earlier that following SH when we have a past tense ED ending, uh, that the pronunciation of ED is a T sound, washed, for example. He washed mm -hmm. the dishes, mashed potatoes. Now, this uh, notice that this, this is actually being used as as an adjective, right? So uh, there are a lot of adjectives with ed endings. Okay, the rules for pronunciation of past tense verb endings usually works for adjectives. Usually, but that's a big usually. <laughs> I said usually, not always. It doesn't always work. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, it always works for verbs, but you, if the you, normally if the word can be a verb, can can be used as a verb, then the rule applies. If the word cannot be used as a verb and only is used as an adjective, then it actually usually gets pronounced as ed, as ed, uh, as a separate syllable. All right. Uh, Okay, what does mashy mean? I'm sorry. It's okay. Mashed. Uh, <laughs> well, it's similar to smashed. Um, Americans love to eat mashed potatoes. I love to eat mashed potatoes. Um, I don't. Have you ever been to KFC? Not to. Mm -hmm. not, I'm not trying to do an advertisement or anything, but it's basically everywhere I've been in the world, they have mashed potatoes on the menu. They sell fried chicken, and then they have a little plastic cup where they have potatoes that are basically smashed and then whipped up with butter and milk until they're like creamy. Okay. All right. So mash is it, to mash is a verb. To mash oh, something sorry. mushy. Right. Mushy. Uh, mushy. Oh okay. Mushy is another adjective. Mushy means it's too well as you can guess too much milk. Mushy means something is too too liquidy, uh, usually referring to some kind of dish, some kind of food. If it's mushy, um, okay. Uh, well, you, if you ever have a bowl of cereal with milk and you get called away to the phone for 20 minutes, you come back and your cereal's mushy. 
it's no longer crisp. It's just all wet and soggy. And yeah, it's Jeff. It's definitely negative, unless you like mushy things, I guess. Uh, but anyway, okay, mushy mashed potatoes. Yeah, too much milk, so they're too liquidy and yeah, they're not firm, hard enough. Uh, oh, you're welcome. Uh, okay, Hajar, number eight. Please change the furniture with the polish. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Please, please shine, shine the, furniture the furniture with polish. With okay. Polish. If I say okay. this, I normal, it normal. normal. Please shine, please the, shine the furniture with polish. With polish. Okay. Okay. It's tough getting it's tough getting this Z sound, Z sound, which is which voice, is voice and it's a, a, but the tongue, tongue position is similar, is similar to this S H voice. Shine, Shine the furniture. furniture. Notice, Notice how the T makes a C H sound. This is fairly it's common. common. Uh, yeah, my yeah, voice, my voice is, reverberating is reverberating because I think Hajar does, does not have a headphone. headphone so. So. Hajar? There you go. There you go. You mute. Mute. It's okay. okay. So, so thank you, Hajar. <laughs> All right. That's what happens when you don't have a headphone on verbling. I, I'm guessing there's a couple other possibilities, but... That's what happens. It echoes for everyone else in the class. Uh, okay. Now we're going to try something a wee bit different. This is what we're going to do. I am going to read the sentence. I'm going to say one or the other. And I'm totally random. All right. This is a listening exercise. I want you to listen and tell me which word do you hear. Uh, all right, Italo, uh, you're first. You okay. ready? You sure can shop. Uh, with the uh, the first shop. First, okay, yeah, you can. Actually, that's a good way to answer me. The first, and then repeat the word, or the second, and repeat the word. Actually, that works great. You're absolutely right. Very good. If you need me to repeat it again, just ask me. It's not a problem. Okay. Nassim, number two. Yeah. I didn't see the ditch. The second one, the ditch. The ditch. Okay. And do you know what a ditch is? No. All right. A ditch is beside the road. It runs parallel. It runs along beside the road for the extra water or rain watch it washes off into a ditch okay so that the, the road doesn't get flooded so a ditch is a long narrow hole in the ground basically uh, okay number three Anna yes okay it's a silly wish and the first one. Okay, wish. Okay, you're absolutely correct. Good job. Uh, Julietta? Mm -hmm. She brought me the wash. The first one, wash. Indeed, you are correct. Very good. Excellent. Uh, okay. And now number five, Hajar. You have a large, large chair. chair. Uh, the second chair. Very good. Very good. You are correct. You guys are very good listeners. All right. Back to you, Atalo. Uh, we must fix the chip. And uh, the second one, one chip. 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 Yep. That's it. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Very good. Nasem, does she have a new crush? The first one, crush. Okay. What does this mean, Nasim? Does she have a new crush? Uh, crush like the accident. 
I think you're thinking of Crash with an A, not a U. Mm. Actually, this is a, the reason I ask is because this is idiomatic. Um, it's not literal. It's not dictionary definition. Does anyone in class know? Anyone can answer. Does anyone know what that means? Does she have a new crush? Nope. Uh, okay, we'll learn a little vocabulary then. A, a crush in English is a, not really slang, just an idiomatic meaning. It's someone that, what I'm really asking, has she fallen in love with someone new? So a crush is someone who you're suddenly, quickly in, in love with. Or a crush, like teenage girls who fall in love with Justin Bieber. All right, they all have a they all have a crush on Justin Bieber. Uh, not very likely that their love will be requited. Seems a little silly. A very sudden, un uh, unreturned love. A little bit immature, maybe. Uh, what's a crutch, though? Does anybody know what a crutch is? Another more rare vocabulary word. Has anyone has anyone in the class ever broken their leg? No, I am the only one. <laughs> okay, well I broke my foot a few years back and I was on crutches. I was on crutches for um, 10 weeks, I think. Uh, a crutch is what you it, you use it to help you walk, but more abstractly, a crutch is something that you use uh, that you use to help yourself out. He has very rich parents, and he uses them as a crutch. Okay, so he's using them to help himself. He's not walking. He's not surviving on his own. He uses his parents as a crutch. Okay, a couple of interesting words there. Anna, we're all the way back to you again. Yes. Uh, okay, number eight. You completed the chore. Uh, the second one. Mm -hmm. Very good, chore. Uh, what are chores? Do you know? Anna? Mm, uh, yes, uh, uh, sure is is the seizure. Um, yes. Chore is in the task tasks tasks on at ta task tasks at home. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you got it. All right. Usually at home, it doesn't have to be, but uh, you know, m most of the time it is. Yeah, chores yes. are like cleaning your room or doing the dishes. Washing the laundry, wash your clothes, that kind of thing. That's right. Very good. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Well, we're going to expand this one more time here. Hopefully, you guys can see this. Let me adjust. We're going to try to read a dialogue here. A little bit bigger. Hopefully, you can all see this well enough. Uh, as the dialogue continues, I'll just go to the next student. So each of you will just take the part, and then the next person take the next part. Obviously, practical speaking with plenty of SHs and CHs. So, uh, Julietta, can you start with uh, Richard here? Do you have any change for the washing machine? My wife Sharon is visiting her parents in Michigan. I'm watching the children and doing the chores. Okay, very good. Of course, <laughs> place names are going to be a little bit confusing. Mm. Yeah, especially American place names because Michigan has an SH. Chicago has an SH sound. Not sure how this happened, but these words are actually derived from Native American words and there's a lot of American city names that don't really obey uh, common pronunciation rules 
actually. So it's not, not surprising that it's easy to make mistakes when you're um, talking about city names and state names in American states and American places. So anyway, that's Michigan. Michigan. Do you know where Michigan is, Julieta? No. No idea? No. Really? Does anybody know where Michigan is? It's a city. Michigan, I think it is a city, but it's actually a state. Uh, uh, oh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know exactly uh, where, where is it. Um, <laughs> Okay. But I know is a city of a state. It's a state in the central United States, right in the middle. Uh, it's surrounded by one, two, at least two, maybe three. At least two of the Great Lakes, possibly three. I can't remember my geography now. Um, but it, it's got a lot of water, and it's basically it's a peninsula. Uh, uh, I, I, I think I remember uh, there is a lake uh, with uh, this name. Well, there is. That's right. Lake Michigan. That's correct. <laughs> okay, okay. It's, it's true, yes. Yes, that's one of the lakes. Uh, and there's at least one more, Huron and... Oh, I don't know, but yes, it's a state uh, very north borders, bordering uh, Canada. Anyway, it's a state. Detroit is probably its most famous city. Detroit, Michigan. Okay. Anyway, let's continue. Hajar, watch out! Don't put bleach on those shirts. You'll watch out the color. Okay, a couple small mistakes here. Don't put bleach on those shirts. Okay, and then wash out the color. Definite SH sound. Don't put bleach on those shirts. You had a little smart, small problem with those. You want to try it one more time, please? Uh, watch out, don't put bleach on do in those G uh, shirts, you'll sh wash out the color. It was better, it was better, much, yeah, much better, much better. Okay, uh, shirts, okay. Uh, Hajar, do you know what bleach is? Uh, can you repeat, please? Do you know do what? You know what? Bleach is? Bleach is? No. Okay. Okay. Bleach is a chemical substance very common to use when washing clothes, particularly white clothes. If you accidentally put bleach on colored shows, if you put bleach on your red shirt, your red shirt will now be pink, uh, pink and white. Okay. Uh, it helps to keep clothes white. Okay, very common. Most it, every everywhere has this, and people use it to do laundry, and also it kills germs. So people use it to clean kitchens and bathrooms and such. Uh, okay, moving on. Uh, Italo, take it from here. Okay, uh, will you teach me how to wash clothes? Okay, uh, very good, by the way. Clothes, uh, a word about clothes. Yes, pron uh, proper pronunciation does pronounce the TH the way Italo did. He pronounced it properly. Clothes, you could hear the voiced TH sound. That was correct. But uh, just so you know, it is perfectly normal and okay to pronounce it close as in close the door uh, as in the verb close not as in the adjective close but close with a Z sound 
Okay, it's perfectly normal to talk about clothes that you wear as clothes. It's a little easier. It's a common, acceptable reduction. You're, trust me, you're allowed to do it. And it's just a lot easier to pronounce. Uh, Okie doke. Nassim, can you take it from here? Yes. Uh, be sure to wash white shirts separately. Don't use too much soap. Okay. Pronunciation was absolutely perfect. However, don't forget to breathe, Nassim. <laughs> we, we have periods for a reason. There should be a pause. Okay. <laughs> So when you read it, it was like, be sure to wash white shirts separately. Don't use too much soap. That's not really right because you need to pause. Be sure to wash white shirts separately. Don't use too much soap. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, and 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 believe me, if you <laughs> there are second language speakers, I know you don't normally do this, not so I've heard you speak enough, but. There are second language speakers who do this. When you do that, then first language speakers listening to you are going to get very confused. After two or three sentences, which should have ended in periods, we're not going to know anymore what is a subject, what is an object, what is a verb, what, are you, what is a gerund, what is a gerund clause. We'll start to lose track of what are, I have the sentence structure completely, and we won't understand the thing you're saying. Even if you're speaking the sentences all correctly in a row, even if you're reading something, but if you refuse to make pauses where periods should go after two or three, I guarantee you, even native speakers will be completely lost. Uh, I will do it. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, Anna, can you? Uh, yes. Um I wish uh, Sharon uh, would return. It's more uh, natural for a woman to watch and chop. Okay. A uh, couple things. Pronunciation. I wish Sharon. Now there I have clearly two sounds that are exactly the same. I wish Sharon. Uh, I wish Sharon. I wish Sharon. There you go. You only need to pronounce it once. You can stretch it a little bit, since, especially since it's a continuant. I wish Sharon like that. I wish Sharon. Mm -hmm. That's great. Perfectly natural. Um, not only is it acceptable, it's a very good idea. It actually really helps your rhythm. All right. Okay, wash and shop. You got it, Anna. You got it. It was close. Uh, yes. You got it. <laughs> yes. You, wa uh, you wash and shop. That's it. Oh, that, that was perfect. Okay. okay. All right, Anna, what do you think of this statement? It's more natural for a woman to wash and shop. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, really? <laughs> I I I don't understand <laughs> exactly uh, what uh, the sentence meaning. <laughs> okay. It's, it's more natural for a woman to wash and shop. Ah, yeah. oh, oh, uh, like, uh, oh, uh, machista total. Like I think nature. <laughs> like nature. nature. <laughs> you know, like the the. Wolves out in the forest. Of course, the girl wolves are washing the clothes. <laughs> oh, it's, it's yeah. always the same, the same um, um, thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Anyway, uh, Julieta, can you try take it from here? You sound like um. Showing it, I Perfect. don't mind doing chores. I'm great in kitchen too. Okay, well, Tom doesn't believe that. Very good, tough word here, but you nailed it. Chauvinist. Uh, do you know what a chauvinist is, Juliana? Mm, I think um, uh, sexist. Yes, mm -hmm. very good. Not well, maybe exactly perfect. Okay, and great job on the pronunciation as well. 
Um, thank you. Great job. Hajar, can you take the the next sentence, please? Would you like to take charge? I will share full pay you cash. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, very good pronunciation. All, all perfect. I would advise you, Hajar, that in English we do speak contractions. It actually sounds slightly odd for for somebody to say, "I will cheerfully pay you cash." Um, I'll cheerfully pay you cash. I'm great in the kitchen instead of I am. Uh, these contracted pronouns with the auxiliary verb. It's perfectly natural and normal. It's not too informal. The President of the United States uses contractions when he's speaking, when he's giving a speech to Congress or when he's giving a speech to the American public. He says things like, we're going to move the country forward. We'll, we will, we, we are. Um, he uses contractions. It sounds odd not to use contractions in speaking. In writing, of course, writing's more formal. We use full forms, mostly. Uh, okay. Uh, Italo, next one, yes. please. Listen, old chap. I am, I am a bachelor and too old to chase after children. I am, uh, I am in a rush. Yeah. Uh, it's been nice uh, chatting with you, Richard. Yeah. Chatting. It's been nice chatting with you. Okay. All right. Chatting with you. And bachelor. Uh, Tello, are, are you a bachelor or are you married? Yes, I am a bachelor. You're a bachelor. Okay. <laughs> Very good. All right, a bachelor, of course, is a singler, a singler, sorry, a single male. Uh, Italo, do you know what a single female is called? Excuse me? Do you know what a single female, if a single male is called a bachelor, what is a single? I don't know what do you say. Uh, okay, a a bachelor is a single, unmarried male. So a single, unmarried female can be called a bachelorette. Yeah. All right. Uh, formally speaking, of course. Uh, okay. Nassim, take us home. <laughs> yeah. Last one. Okay. Uh, sure, uh, sure. Nice chatting with you, too, Tom. Okay. Um, no problem. Perfect. Uh, okay, and that will do it. Sorry, teacher. Uh, yes. What is an old chap? What is a what? Old, old chap. chap. <laughs> okay. Good question. Old chap uh, literally means old friend. Um, Chap is male, okay. Guy, it's like saying guy. It is older English. It's a, it's a strange word. Um, it's like older English slang. It's like slang from 150 years ago, really. But still, some Brits use it. You won't you won't hear any Americans saying this unless they're being sarcastic. So it's like saying, "Listen, my friend. Um, listen, buddy." I would like that. Uh, or, you know, Americans, you might hear, listen, dude. <laughs> I'm a bachelor. All right. Listen, old chap. All right. When I when I read this even to myself, I, I automatically assume a fake British accident, accent. Listen, old chap. I'm a bachelor. I'm too old to chase after children. Okay. I can't help myself because no American would ever say this. <laughs> Good question, though. Uh, I'm afraid that that's all we have. Okay. 
I'm afraid we're out of time. I'm out of time. Got to go. Have another class. But thank you, everyone. We'll thank, you. You okay. thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, Nader. Bye, Nader. Bye. Bye, Nader. Thank Have you. a lovely day. You too. Have a great day. Have a nice evening.